Hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to make real-time interactive charts with HTMX and Plotly. Okay, so these are the charts we're gonna be putting together today. And you can see that they're interactive, so I can click on them and I can move them around and I can zoom in, I can do all kinds of stuff. All of this is done on the back end. These charts are being generated with Plotly as HTML elements on the back end. On the front end, HTMX is just pulling this HTML in and replacing the element. So the first thing we want to do is create our virtual environment. And once that's done, we can activate it. Next, we'll want to install our requirements to make it easier. I'm just going to copy them in requirements txt. I'll paste them in here. I'm going to do a pip install dash r requirements. As with all things fast API, the first thing we need to do is actually instantiate fast API as our app. And then since we're also using Jinja, we're going to set up a templates folder in this directory called templates, which does not yet exist. So I can go ahead and create that now. So we can go ahead and set up our first route, our index route, where the actual dashboard is going to live. And we can just do that in fast API by setting the app decorator uh, to dot get, since it's going to be a get request to our root directory or our index. And we're just going to tell it that it's a type of HTML response. That's what we're going to be sending back. We can call it index. That doesn't necessarily matter. And since we're going to be working with stocks, I'm just going to list a few of the stocks that I actually want to chart up. So we can return that to the templates dot template response. And that's the thing that we created above for Jinja, uh, for, an index.html file, which doesn't exist yet. We'll create that in a minute. Uh, and then the stocks, obviously. So we're gonna be passing the stocks into the HTML. I'm gonna go ahead and create the index.html file. And I'll just do the Emmet thing just to get something in there. And we could say, hello, world. And if I do Python main.py, it does nothing because I forgot to do something very important, which is actually set up our server. So at the bottom of our main.py file, I'm just gonna paste this in, telling Uvicorn to run our main file at port 8000. And now if we run it again, it should work. And there we go, hello world. So for our HTML, we can go ahead and change the title to something more accurate, like financial dashboard. We can go ahead and add our imports. So we have Tailwind, we have HTMX, which is the main thing we'll be using, and then Plotly, which is another important one. For the body, we can go ahead and add a container for all our charts. This is just a Tailwind grid. Uh, we'll iterate over the stocks that we brought in that we showed in the other endpoint. And for each one of these stocks, we want to create its own container. And we'll add some attributes here that are going to be important for getting the data from the back end. We can add this class uh, to fade in the results as they come in from HTMX, and I'll add the style for that in a second. We can actually point it to where we're gonna get the data from, and this is an API endpoint that we'll make next. We'll tell it how we want it to swap, so swap the inner content of this div, don't replace the outer element. We want it to also take a little bit of time to swap, so give it a second, and then we'll set transition to true. Then we're also gonna tell it when it's going to load, and in this case, it's on load. We also want it to do it every 300 seconds, and then we'll add that style for the fading in of the swap transition. Okay, now it's time to actually fetch our data. And what we'll do is create an endpoint API slash get chart, and then we can insert the ticker symbol here. Uh, and all it's gonna do is return a an HTML response. We can call it something like get chart. It doesn't necessarily matter too much. And then we can go ahead and fetch that ticker data with Yahoo Finance. We're going to set the end time. So we can do the start date, which is an arbitrary number. In this case, I'm doing days equals 20, and it's just a time delta. And then we can go ahead and we can run the history function in order to get that specific data. And then for the X data, it's just going to be the date. So we're going to be pulling that out of the history uh, into its own list. We're going to do the same thing for the price for the Y data, and we're just going to set it to the close price for now. This is just some placeholder stuff. If you want to try having it update real time with random numbers, this is actually useful. The line color is something that we can also set here for when we pass it into our charting function, which we'll make next. And then we'll return that chart. So I'm going to go make this function now. For the sake of making the charting a little bit easier, we're going to go ahead and create a new file called charts.py. Okay, now we're going to set up Plotly, and this is where the magic happens. So we're going to import a graphic object from Plotly. We're going to go ahead and create our function that we are passing into that API endpoint, and we're passing in the usual variables, so the data and the color and the ticker symbol. Uh, we can go ahead and instantiate a Plotly figure. We can pass it a scatter plot, which is what we're going to be using for that chart. Uh, we can go ahead and pass it the X data, and then we can update the traces. So this is the actual line to be the color 
of that uh, color that we passed in for line color. Since we want our axes to be nice and clean, we're gonna go ahead and update those. We're gonna make sure that we don't show the grid uh, for the X axis. We wanna see the tick labels. We wanna not have any of the lines and we wanna make sure that we give it a title. So this is the title in this case for the bottom. The fonts we can change and we can change the colors for those as well. And then we're just gonna copy for the Y axis. It's essentially the same thing, but we're gonna change the title. I didn't think that the interactivity was gonna be necessary for some of the things, but you can enable these or disable these as you need, like or as your uh, user needs it. So we can go ahead and I'm gonna set click mode to none, hover mode to false, drag mode to false, uh, and just these arbitrary um, things. It's all very customizable. You can go ahead and do whatever you need. The plot and paper are important for the sake of setting the color of the actual chart itself. We can change the color of the fonts. And then this is where the, th this is probably the most important part. And it's that we can change that figure into an HTML. We can also tell it to not include the plotly JS uh, the CDN import, and we could tell it to make sure that it's not the full HTML, otherwise it's gonna try to include the body and the and the head tag. And then after that, we just return that. So this is literally just HTML. And with that done, we can go ahead and set it as an import here. And that is essentially it. So if we refresh over on the right, and I forgot to change this uh, from stock to crypto. This was an earlier experiment. Okay, so I fixed the typos. This should be stock, stocks, stock. And then I forgot to add the background to black. And if I refresh, then we get our charts. Pretty responsive and it's very clean. So it's easy to see, it's easy to read everything. You could change the labels as you like. You could take a look at some of the Plotly API documentation in order to see how else you can style it and make sure that it res it's responsive enough for what you need. But as you can see, for most things, this would be great. So hopefully you can see how powerful of a technique this is. You technically could use any chart that is available on Plotly, convert it to HTML, and then send it to HTMX. And so you can make very quick work of any kind of dashboard that you can think of. Hopefully that was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any suggestions for stuff you'd want to see uh, put together with HTMX, be sure to leave a comment below. See you in the next video.